Hang her! Tame the spirit! No, Major! I am no way! Denial is part of your possession! I am not possessed! Let me go where you no, want, Ray! Who is your master? <laughs> where is the devil's mark? Incubus. When did you take hold? I am done no wrong! Confess to your position! I will not! Let me go! And we must reach the spirit uh, from you. Uh, let me go! Let me go! Let me go! I exorcise the most vile spirit, the very embodiment of our enemy, the entire spectre, the whole legion, to get out! And flee from this creature of God. I am not mad. He himself commands thee. Whose order those cast down even from the heights of heaven to the depths of the earth. Yeah, therefore in fear, O oh, Satan. Enemy of the faith. Thief of life. Procurer of sorrow. I am not possessed. Why dost thou resist? When thou ah. the Christ the Lord will destroy thy strength. <laughs> Come, child. I will care for you. I think I am possessed. I will care for you. They will come for me again. Then I will protect you. I cannot go back. I cannot accept a novice who has abandoned her convent. She has suffered much. Have you made known she's here? Her parents or the sisters at Bradweiler will come for her. Mm. We'll make safe the girl's return. I will try to do so. You anticipate difficulty. Sister Hildegard may want the girl to stay. She needs a companion. Faith is our companion. Will I recover? We must pray that you will. I am fearful. What makes you fearful? The loneliness of faith, the terror of demons. I was given by my parents at the age of eight. When I first came here, I was always afraid. And when did you stop being afraid? I'm still afraid. Only now I know that there can be peace. And when did you find peace? When I first heard music. Oh, Eugari, in leta via ambulasti, ubi cum virio dei mangisti, ilum tangi. Music has always been my greatest comfort. How did you learn? I had a very fortunate childhood. My father had a large house on the Rhine. There were servants, horses, acres of land. And then you were sent to a convent? Yes. My father died. My mother found it difficult. She loved him so much. Then there was nothing. I 
had to leave. What must I do to be well? Await the voice of God. I do not know if I have your faith. Come. Let us join the sisters. a novice from Brauweiler. You know she has been in our infirmary. She will be staying with us until she is quite recovered. I trust you will welcome her into our community and find a place for her in your hearts and prayers. Tomorrow after Lords, we will learn the Easter music. Now let us guard ourselves against the perils of the night. Will I see my home again? With God's help. My family are heretics. None shall be excluded from his kingdom. You think not? I know not. Was Christ with me at Sephoria when we marched against Salah Hadid? He was. Was he with me when I had to flee before the ever-turning sword? He was. Was he with us when they set the earth on fire? He was. Was he with us when the Holy Cross was taken? He is ever with you. <laughs> no. You are wrong. My family has been banished from the church. Yet you fought under his banner to relieve the holy city. <laughs> and failed. How is the crusader? Dying. Brother Alma, the man is excommunicate. I hope he will make a full confession. Is he comfortable? Sister Hildegard is looking after him. Is that prudent? Well, she has the greater knowledge. And can cause the greater trouble. Abbot, where do you journey? You see the sick girl's mother. She cannot rest here. Well, surely she must stay here until she is well. I will establish the length of her stay.
You play with great beauty. Oh, do not stop. The sister of Moses led her people with timbrels and dancing. If I had her faith, I would be well again. I do not write this music for performance, but for prayer. The soldier is dying. Has he made confession? No. We must go to him. Well, you know he's outside the church. He is excommunicated. He is from a family of heretics. But he will repent. Only the abbot can give absolution. Come, let us reason together, said the Lord. Though your sins be scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. Though they be red like crimson, they shall be as wool. He will risk his anger. We must if we are to heed the word of God. Come. Augustine holds and in no way doubts that every pagan, heretic and schismatic will go to the eternal fire which is prepared for the devil and his angels unless before the end of his days he is reconciled with and restored to the Catholic Church. Confess your sins. Too late. Jesus said to his disciples, ask and the gift will come. Seek and you shall find. Knock and the door shall be opened. My sins are black. He will wash them clean. You will not know me. No sin is so great that it is not worthy of forgiveness. Uh, then help me. Thou art all merciful God that holdest not in abhorrence any of thy creatures. Thou dost overlook the sins of men in hope of their repentance. Thou dost spare them, for thou art the Lord God. Have mercy on this thy servant, O God. Have mercy on him. Here is a soul that will put its trust in thee. Do you reject Satan, father of sin and prince of darkness? Yes. Do you believe in Jesus Christ? who was born of the Virgin Mary, was crucified, died, and was buried, and is now seated at the right hand of God the Father. Yes. Repeat after me. To thee, O Lord, I look for refuge. To thee, O Lord, I look for refuge. Never let me be ashamed of my trust. Never let me be ashamed of my trust. In thy faithful care, deliver me. In thy faithful care, deliver me. Grant me audience and make haste to rescue me. O oh God, whose nature is ever to show mercy and forbearance, we humbly entreat thee for the soul of thy servant who at thy bidding has today departed from this life. Do not deliver him into the enemy's hands or put him out of mind forever, but bid thy Holy angels welcome him and lead him home to paradise. And lead him home to paradise. That soldier, that man was an excommunicate. We cannot break papal law. The body must be exhumed. Exhumed? You must remove it from sacred ground. You want us to dig up the body? We cannot exhume it. You refuse? 
we refuse. If you refuse, you and your sisters will be placed under an interdict until you are obedient. Then Peter and the other apostles answered and said, We ought to obey God rather than man. I would remind you of St. Paul's letter to Timothy. Let the woman learn in silence with all subjection. I suffer not a woman to teach nor to usurp authority over a man, but to be in silence. You are to cease singing the divine office. Services shall be said, not sung, and there will be no communication between us. And you are furthermore denied the holy sacrament from this your priest. You may go. Send for Sister Catherine. Make haste. Speak now. What must I do? in the fold of my soul, ash of ash, corruption of corruption, quaking in the shade as a feather. Do not cast me from the living as a stranger. I labor with great sweat with this vision. I am full of fear and dare not speak your mystery. O oh, good and gentle God, teach me what I ought to say. Behold all the bones of the people. In whatsoever place on the earth they were, congregated together as in a moment and covered again with their own flesh. And all of the people arose. And from the east, a very great splendor shone forth. And there, in a cloud, I saw the Son of Man in the same appearance which he had on earth, with naked and open wounds, coming with the angelic choirs, seated upon a flaming throne, glorying above the great tempest of the world. I will never move him. You are awake. I am back in the world. We must move the body. God has shown me what to do. Obey the abbot and your music will be restored. But if we leave the body where it is, there will be no music. How can we tear him out of paradise? We shall never have music again. Then let it be so. It will echo as a memory of Eden.
Stop this! Our music is forbidden. Oh, We can no longer suffer this punishment. To Archbishop Henry of Mainz, gracious Lord and Father, who has been set in the place of Christ as shepherd for the flock of his church, I see myself compelled to write to you relating to the ban imposed upon us by my spiritual superior. It concerns a dead man whose transferal and burial in our cemetery took place through his priest without opposition. When my superior ordered me a few days after the burial to remove the body from our cemetery, I was suddenly overcome by the light of a great vision and saw the following words in my soul. The corpse must never be removed. To do any other would bring upon you the shadow of great danger because it would be contrary to the will of the truth. Lest we should appear to be disobedient, we have followed the ban and have suspended the singing of divine office and the reception of the Lord's body which we were accustomed to receive monthly. All my sisters and myself have experienced great sorrow because of this. There. Your mother is coming. Are you certain? The abbot sent for her. It would seem that she cares for you. She cares more for her reputation than for my salvation. been looking after me. Indeed. Your daughter has not been well. And who are you to tell me this? I am the mother of this convent. We give comfort to those in distress. My daughter may have been foolish. She's hardly distressed. Why have you come? I've heard from your brother. He has founded a convent at Basel in the Diocese of Bremen. I cannot leave. Then I shall demand it. Walk with me. Your brother has secured a strong position and a good foundation, yet you dare to show me the most terrible ingratitude in public when my only care has been for you. You sent me to Brauweiler and they beat me. You were mad then. I had the falling sickness. Well, if you're not mad then, you're mad now. Your brother has at last secured an office that befits the daughter of a marchioness, and you refuse to come. I cannot leave. Then what will you do? How can you progress under so stubborn an abbess and so punished a foundation? The nuns all suffer because of her perverse imagination. I see a woman. So exceptional is her sweetness, and so rich in delights her beauty, that the human mind is powerless to comprehend her. She stretches in height from earth to heaven. Her face shines with exceeding brightness, and her gaze is fixed on heaven. She is dressed in a dazzling robe of white silk, and draped in a cloak adorned with stones of great price, with emerald, with sapphire, and with pearls, having about her feet the shoes of onyx. But her face is stained with dust, and her robe is ripped down the right side, and her cloak has lost its sheen of beauty, 
and her shoes have been blackened. And she is calling. Hear, heaven, how the face of your ecclesia is sullied. Mourn, earth, that my robe is torn. Tremble, abyss, because my shoes are blackened. Foxes have lairs, and the birds of the air have nests. But I have no helper, no comforter, no staff to lean on for support. My nurturers, the priests, who ought to make my face glow red like the dawn, my robe gleam like lightning, my cloak sparkle like precious stones, and my shoes glisten like whiteness itself, have strewn my face with dust. Enough. Mother. This woman is lunatic. She speaks of visions. She claims they're imparted by the Holy Spirit. Yet no one else has seen them. They are not substantiated by any council of the church. They come from a mind possessed, a mind that knows nothing of the world. I rather think I know too much of it. You are recovered. I was never ill. Come away. I fear for your daughter. You have said enough. I will both care for her and secure her advancement. This is not the will of God. How can you know? Who has created heaven? God. Who opens heaven to the faithful? God. Who is like God? No one. Therefore, no one should offer resistance to the will of God. Is this the will of God? You know the will of God. The living light has told me. Is your imprisonment of my daughter the will of God? This is not imprisonment. Is her fear the will of God? The visions tell of suffering. It is right that we should fear them. Oh, do not speak to me of suffering. How can you know of it? You have no sense of the world. I know what it is to suffer. I have lost my husband and I have lost my life for all my life was held within that love and now I have nothing, nothing but this, my daughter. Do not think that I will give her up. The goddess. You know the things that we have shared. Stay, if you will. Stay. If you think you cannot leave. But if you need my protection, if you need my care, let me offer you my love. Let me offer you my love. What shall I do? What can I say to make you stay? Do not make me. Come, daughter, come. She is my mother. So in part am I. Never. She has found a convent for me. And will you be content? How can I know? Come. I should follow my mother. Go then. Thank you. May you keep the joy of song. For Mary bore not only the word, but the song of God in her flesh. Then was our mouth filled with laughter and our tongue with singing. Send for me one day. When I am at the last. I will give you comfort. I am come into my garden, my sister, my spouse. I have gathered my myrrh with my spice. I have eaten my honeycomb with my honey. I have drunk my wine with my milk. Eat, O oh friends. Drink, yea, drink abundantly, O oh beloved. 
I sleep, but my heart waketh. It is the voice of my beloved that knocketh, saying, Open to me, my sister, my love, my dove, my undefiled. For my head is filled with dew, and my locks with the drops of the night. The Archbishop will question the truth of your visions. Will he hear my case? He will arrive shortly. That is considerate of him. Take great care, Sister Hildegard. He may not be as lenient as you find your abbot. I am mindful of your concern. Mystical theology teaches us that there are three kinds of vision. Those that come from Almighty God, those that come from the natural man or the imagination, and those that come from the devil. Of what kind are yours, sister? These visions are from God. You are certain? What I say comes not from me, but from the light. St. Paul warns of those who heed seducing spirits and the doctrines of devils. On the day of Pentecost, did not the disciples speak in tongues of fire as the Spirit gave them utterance? You compare yourself with the disciples of our Lord? We are all his disciples. Have others witnessed these things that you have seen? My priest. And you, priest, assume these visions to be true? Though I have not seen them, I do not doubt them. For they are fully congruent with scriptural tradition. There is logic to them? Divine logic. Themes recur. And you judge this woman to be holy? I do. You have no doubts? I have never doubted, Sister Hildegard. Sister, you have broken the laws of the Church. Reverend Father, I am a poor, weak woman, a vessel of clay. I have not asked for these visions. I have not sought them out. I have not even prayed for them. I am no more than a feather carried on the breath of God, blown which way he pleases. In my body and in my soul, I do not know myself. I reckon myself as nothing. I rely on the living God so that he who has no beginning and no end May in all these things keep me safe from evil. The rack holds no terror. No, nor burning coal, nor branded iron. You have no fear. I fear nothing but God's judgment. And nothing will sway you from this your chosen course. Nothing. These visions make you weak, sister. Not so weak that I cannot recall them. Not so weak that I can no longer stand. Not so weak that I will not speak of them until my last breath. Then tell me of them. Tell me the things that you have seen. I have seen the city. I have seen the place. The throne on which he sits. The company of the blessed. And when all life is over, the elements will shine out with the greatest brightness and beauty, and all blackness and filth will be removed from them. And fire without its raging heat will blaze like the dawn, and air without density will be completely limpid, and water without its power to flood or drown will stand transparent and calm. 
and the sun and moon and stars will sparkle in the firmament like precious stones set in gold with great glory and brilliance and they will no longer turn so restlessly in orbit so as to distinguish day from night for the world will have ended and they will have become immutable and from that time on there will be no darkness and day will be perpetual sister let us pray that we may see that day i long to taste it What have you heard? I do not know if I can tell you. Tell? It should wait. Clearly it cannot tell me now. It will go hard with you. I must know. Ricardus. Ricardus is with God. So young. She had always suffered. And now she is at peace. First she was taken from you and now she has been taken from us all. God kept her so jealously that worldly delight could not embrace her. I'm sorry it distresses you. She fought it. She rose like a flower in the beauty and glory and symphony of the world. These mysteries and wonders which I reveal to you were previously unknown. But I show and give them to you now so that you may make them known to the burning hearts of the faithful. For they are the very pure stones to be used for the building of the celestial Jerusalem. For behold, now is the time of our departing. Now is the time to make things new. I have seen such sights. Rest. At last, I know what I must do. What have you seen? We must live anew. 
How can this place contain us? How can we stay here where the thoughts and deeds of men are ever upon us? Tell me what things you have seen. I have seen that we must make a journey. And give up all that we have done here. He that loseth his life shall find it. For what shall it profit a man if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul? Will you come with me? Where will you go? To begin a convent of our own. And you would need me? As our priest. I had thought to end my life here. I had thought there would be no more time to journey. I do not know if I can go without you. And I can hardly stay when you have gone. And in that light, as in a mirror, I saw a layer of air, pure beyond the clarity of the purest water. It shone with light, stronger than the rays of the sun. And I saw in that layer of air those blessed women, clothed in crowns of purest gold, interwoven with roses and lilies. Whenever the voice of the Lamb resounded, a breath of wind sprang up from the depths of the Godhead, which stirred the stems of the roses and lilies till they rang out like the strings of harps. A wonderful music was heard in perfect harmony with the voice of the Lamb. Only those who wore the crowns could sing this music, and only they could hear the song, rejoicing in it, as they delight who first set their eyes on the sun's unimagined splendor. 